why Scandinavian crime fiction or Nordic noir has become so popular around the world. The wave of Nordic crime started in the 1990s. IKEA expanded in the 1970s but mostly in the 1980s and 90s. Lego has a longer history but grew to a decent size in the 1970s and 80s. For example, in 1975 it had 2,500 employees but in 1985 it had 5,000 employees. Crime fiction is similar to Lego or IKEA, puzzles that need to be solved. Today our room are furnished by IKEA, our toys are made by Lego, our bookshelves or TV show are filled with Nordic crime fiction. In the olden days we used to talk to people with Nokia, but we no longer talk to anyone. We are practically Scandinavian. Nordic countries include Sweden, Norway, Denmark, Finland and Iceland. They are like five siblings. All have the same cross, just different colors. As it is called, all have some warm colors except Finland. They have the sauna to keep them warm. Despite the cross, the majority of people consider themselves atheists. In Sweden, 75%, Norway and Denmark not far behind with 62 and 61% respectively. Finland, 55% and Iceland less than a majority with 49% consider themselves atheists. Sweden is the fashionable one, but eats meatball every day. Norway is the wealthy one, but crosses the border to Sweden to buy cheap alcohol. Denmark is a happy one, but so miserable that has replaced the sun with a candle yoga called Huga. Finland is the shy one, but always sitting naked in sauna. Iceland is the aloof one, but 60% of them live in one tightly packed city, Reykjavik. Okay, enough of silly stereotypes, let me give you the rundown on best known authors of crime fiction from each country. Norway and Sweden excel in crime fiction, while Denmark in TV crime series. Norway's most well-known crime authors are Joe Nesbo, the King of Crime, Karen Fossum, the Queen of Crime, Gunnar Stolidsson, the critic of Norway's morally corrupt oil economy, Anne Holt and Alex Stahl. Sweden has Henning Mankell, Stig Larsson, probably the most well-known and bestseller and my favorite, and the duo of Mai Hjuval and Per Wallo. Iceland has Ragnar Jonasson, Ursa Sigurdor daughter, Arnaldor Indrenasson, and Viktor Irnor Ingolfsson. Did you know that 1 in 10 people in Iceland writes a book? The rest of them spend their time counting sheep or money in a bank, or sing. Denmark has Peter Hugh, Anders Bodelsen, who questions materialism and consumerism, Sara Beluiel, and Jussi Adler Olsen. Finland's most well-known writers are Matti Juenso, Antti Tuomainen, Lina Leetolainen. My tongue has never had so much exercise pronouncing these names. Now, to the reasons why Scandinavian crime fiction or Nordic noir has become a global phenomena. 1. Capitalism Crime fiction is the second bestseller after romance. Our daily lives can be quite superficial. While reading crime, we get right in it, if for some dark thrill to satisfy our dark side. In a relatively safe, orderly and affluent countries, there's more appetite for some chaos of crime on the page, especially in cold winter days when you purr by the window and read crime, like being chased by a pack of hyena. 2. Logical Crime fiction is like a puzzle or assembling IKEA furniture. Chaos at the beginning but by the end every piece finds its place and we are satisfied. They come with clear instructions and images. Stig Larsson's Lisbeth Salander's knowledge of computer and cyber world is so methodical and meticulous that ends like assembling a Lego set. If life doesn't make sense for the most part, crime fiction does. For every mystery there is an answer. Nordic countries have become the logical cousins with their Lego, IKEA and now crime fiction. I say Nordic robots next. 3. Simple language Nordic crimes has little or no use of crazy metaphors or grand similes or alliterations. Just simple old language. According to a recent BBC article, Swedes don't like chit chat and want to get straight to the point. This linguistic efficiency is like flat pack furniture, neatly delivered to us without much fuss. Simple, precise and true to life language is like an IKEA dining table. This language simplicity stems from a culture where people don't talk without a reason. Small talk in Sweden is called kallprat or cold talk, dodaprat, dead talk. So a simple language makes Nordic crime fiction easy to translate and more believable and real because it lacks shiny words or literary flash. 4. Minimalist settings Nordic countries are large in area but with very few people. The entire population of all 5 Nordic countries is less than 30 million people, half of the UK, while the land area is almost 15 times bigger. 
If one country, it would be seventh largest in the world. The sparse and secluded settings are peaceful, snow-covered countryside. Even the Scandinavian fashion is quite minimal, black and white or grey. This minimalism appeals to anyone without knowing anything about the culture or the people. Blood on the snow in a remote village is far more intriguing than a murder in a downtown hustle and bustle. We want our murders to happen in exotic, quiet, minimalistic settings because we can easily follow it given how busy our lives have become. 5. Practicality Scandinavian pragmatism and crime investigation is a perfect marriage. Northern countries are cold, you don't laze around in the sun, you better solve the mystery. These pragmatism helped in other countries to fully adapt capitalism long before others. Hostile landscape needs a practical hand. Nordic crime fiction is less focused on fast action, car chase or mass murders, or contrived danger, but rather on more realistic and practical issues. 6. Unexpected The stereotypes of Scandinavia as the happy and safe is like some snowy utopia. We become envious. But when you read Nordic crime fiction, we find that the welfare system, gender politics, and the general mood of the people are not as great as we thought. Germans have a word for this, schadenfreude. They're not so much better than us after all. In a sense, these crime novels are their cries of pain. Some say the new wave of Nordic crime fiction coincided with the end of welfare state and reflects the pessimism of the people about the future of one bright part of the world. It paints a picture of Scandinavia utopia as slightly darker than we assumed, which is unexpected, as Roald Dahl might have said in one of his tales of the unexpected. 7. Social Critique Dostoevsky often combined crime fiction to tell the stories of our existential anxiety and the absence of God as a father figure. Humans feel lost and anxious. He used crime fiction to get deeper into social and psychological issues of the day. Nordic writers have used crime fiction as a social critique, exposing deeper issues in societies such as class, gender inequality, anxiety over immigration, and the madness of consumerism. So Nordic crime fiction combines entertainment with social critique. This makes them more powerful and profound. 8. Lonely Planet Nordic fiction employs many lonely girls and miserable old men. They are not the macho bodybuilder type, but more like us. Stig Larsen, Salander, Peter Hoos, Miller are lonely girls who fight inequality and social injustice. Gredal's character Erhard, Mankels, Wallander, and Nesbo's Harry Hole are old men. Outside crime fiction, two bestsellers from Sweden, A Man Called Ove by Frederick Backman and One Hundred Year Old Man Who Climbed Out of the Window and Disappeared by Jona Jonasson are also about old men. Modern life makes us feel more and more lonely. We relate to these lonely souls fighting for justice and fairness. 9. Humane But what's really unique about Nordic crime fiction is that humans are redeemable. The blame tend to be on social policies, institutions, and establishment. In American fiction, it's often the loner rotten apple that destroys society. In Nordic crime, the blame tend to be more on the system, institutions, government, or circumstances rather than the individual. This stems from Lutheranism, a branch of Protestant Christianity originated in Germany in the 16th century and spread Scandinavia. Lutheranism emphasized a form of capitalism based on fairness and equality, instead of the ruthless winner-takes-all approach. This helped Scandinavia to have a better welfare system than most countries. Nowadays, we have little or no faith in authorities and see politicians as a bunch of liars and corrupt. And know that crime fiction agrees with us and better articulates our feelings about the political and social institutions. 10. Wave A wave creates ripples. Now, with Nordic crime a brand, it attracts the best talents because that's where the money is right now. Many literary authors have dedicated their talent and time to crime fiction. Whether this wave might hinder other genres of fiction in Scandinavia is remain to be seen. There's a great appetite among scholars to study Nordic crime fiction as they border literary fiction and their subject matters, if not the language. In a way, Nordic crime fiction has given the genre a bit more respect among the literary dinosaurs. I don't read crime, but I have read a number of books by Nordic crime writers. 11. Distance The further away the crime takes place, the safer we feel. Crime in our town or neighborhood is not entertainment, that is danger. Distance also makes it more exotic. Familiarity breeds contempt. The unforgettable and unforgivable landscape in winter is not a place where people murder each other. We think they rather help each other. 
that's what makes the Nordic crime fiction so unique and unusual. So to summarize, Nordic crime fiction is very much like IKEA and Lego. Our world has become more and more complex and we have become busier and busier. We take whatever that simplifies that. What better way to relax for a while than read fiction that gives us entertainment while also telling us about deeper and real social issues of our world in the simplest way possible. It's not that Scandinavians are cold, it's our social world that's becoming colder and colder, which is ironic as the earth is getting warmer and warmer. Or rather our technologies, ways of living, urbanization and societal expectations are weighing down on us. And we want to escape this. It is our attempt to escape the heat created by our frantic, hectic modern lives, for some respite in the cold of Scandinavia, away from the crowd, people, humanity as a whole. What part of the world do the Scandinavians make imaginary escapes to? If you live in Scandinavia, please let me know in the comment section. Thank you for watching.